hi a hearty greeting here from Mauritius and yeah I'm not sitting in a swimming pool but very close to a beautiful swimming pool and today I want to share this message with you that life is all about peace greatest commodity of the economy is peace people buying food and having meals at restaurants so they can just have a little bit of peace and have a break people come to this island to experience peace and pay a whole lot of money to do all kinds of stuff to experience that one special i have life feeling i feel good <laughs> problem is that all these experiences are short-lived and not sustainable a young couple I uh, have intercourse before marriage and they feel, oh man, I feel so good. And then there's a baby. People will go to all kinds of lengths to buy stuff, to attain stuff, to become something. And once they achieve those goals, they still feel empty. There's only one source of true peace. I want to to go look at the scripture in, in, in uh, John 14, 27. Jesus says, peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives, do I give it to you. Let not your heart be troubled, and neither let it be afraid. It begs a question, what makes the peace that God gives different than that of the world? Charles Spurgeon said, Peace has been called the pearly, a great pearl of great price, and rightly so, for it is precious and smiles of soft and mild radiance bedecking the heart that wears it. It's indeed a pearl of great price. He that has it has more than riches. If this in his peace is in every deed a true pearl, he wears it in the breast of one of the favorite sons of God. I remember a story where years ago a professor came to me and he asked for an appointment and he was distraught and he was uh, bewildered. And I asked him, what can I do for you? And he said, man, I've exhausted my intellect, but I can't find peace. And I knew him a bit and I indeed he has studied all Eastern philosophy and theology and reading books and or trying all kinds of alternative medicines and so forth. And after all of this, at the age of somewhere in the mid-60s, he came to the conclusion he's still seeking peace. I remember where I, I really prayed and I thought, how can I help this man? And I asked him, and asked him to answer me sincerely. Do you believe Jesus is? I asked. And he looked at me with a puzzled look as if I'm trying to trick him. And I said, no, no, I'm asking a sincere question. Do you believe, do you really believe Jesus is, is, was, is to come? And I remember him looking down to the carpet and taking time. And the next moment when he looked up and he looked me into the eye, his eyes was full of tears and he said, yes, I do believe. I, I cannot, I can no other. And I remember how peace flooded that room and flooded his heart and he became a believer and that's the peace that God gives peace that's different it's not a feeling see when God gives peace he gives himself it's like a child that is distraught because he's alone and think of a child lost in a shopping mall they, they totally overcome with fear and, and anxious anxiety and totally distraught the moment they find their parents again they at peace and that's the kind of peace that God offers it's not just a feeling it's not a substance that makes you feel good for a night or two he gives himself he actually gives us access to him it means that we can experience him we can hear his voice and the, the way that God manifests himself to us is in three ways he manifests himself through scriptures and I know many of you may have experienced this, where you're just reading the scriptures and somehow the word itself quiet your soul. 
you find peace. Nothing has changed. Nothing of your circumstances has changed. But a word has spoken to your heart. Secondly is the presence of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the preceding verses that I've just read in John 14, 27, that says that the Holy Spirit, the comforter, the parakletos, the one that comes and he stands in the gap for us. He's the lawyer that defends us. Well, that presence of the Holy Spirit that fills one's heart in a unique way and it's special and unique for every single person that experiences Him, but you know that you know that you know that you've experienced the Almighty. And thirdly, is the fellowship with the saints. Having the Word, having the experience of the Holy Spirit, and then being united with other believers who have the same experience, and suddenly you have a free, unbroken cord of peace that surpasses understanding. This is what Philippians 4, 7 says, that we bring our prayers and supplications to God, and yet in the bringing, in the asking, He doesn't always give us the solutions. He doesn't always fix everything. He doesn't always give us the money we want, and doesn't always heal our diseases, doesn't always sort out all our problems. But yet, He gives us peace that surpasses all understanding. And I want to share with you five aspects of the peace of God that differentiate His peace from that we receive from the world. The, the peace that He gives is, is like a platform. It's like a place of departure. It's, a, it's like government. You know, people who have peace and His peace have an inner confidence and an inner boldness that, that you just can't explain. It's like, you know, remember Paul being on shipwrecked being 14 days in the deep and yet he had peace to give peace to his uh, fellow uh, dwellers or fellow people on the boat and, and you know that's the kind of peace that God gives it's a inner knowing it's an inner confidence that empowers you and, and for me that is the the first step of this peace that God gives that is like no other is that the fact that he gives himself all wisdom, all power, all might, everything you need is in Him. If you have Him, who can be against you? I can do all things because of Him, the strength that He gives. You see, God does not just give us a substance or a feeling that, that passes by the day. He gives Himself. And having Him and being with Him being and walking with Him is peace. He He's the author of peace. Now, remember fake, you don't counterfeit any product if it's not of value. I mean, counterfeiting is also expensive and it's quite a skill and it's quite a trouble to try to make something that is very unique and special to counterfeit it. So counterfeiters will not counterfeit anything. They actually look for the most priceless, the product that's most in demand, it's most desirable. And that's what they will counterfeit. And it pleases my heart to actually look at all the counterfeits of false peace that the devil tries to produce. And it only tells me how valuable true peace is. So the first differentiation of the peace that God gives is the fact that it's eternal, that he, He's with us. It's not something that goes away. It's, it's uh, eternal. It's lasting. It's, it's there all the time. It never moves. It's never shaken by the news of the world and the, the wars and troubles and problems that we have. We will always have those things. But when we have Him, we are stable. We, it's like He says, what if God is for me? Who can be against me? Because I have Him. Secondly, He says, seek you first the kingdom and his will, his kingdom and his will, and then all these things shall be added unto you. And he, his righteousness that he gives is an ability, it's a rightness with God, a rightness with self, a rightness with others that can simply not reproduce. You see, peace is like a, a watermark, like you can, you can sense it that people have it or they don't have it. People have 
I mean, I feel tired. I, I have dismay. I experience all kinds of things that any human being experiences. But there's an over surmounting peace. And once I go to sleep and I wake up in the morning, it's there. And this is what he says, seek ye first. So it means this peace is only available for those who seek it. This is why that you will find that it's so hard for rich people who are comfortable in their means to have a desire for this. Because, hey, I'm in control. I can pay for any peace I want. I can pay for any comfort I want. The peace that God gives makes poor people rich. That's what Paul says. I have nothing, and yet I possess all things. I'm poor, yet I'm making many people rich. See, this is an inner default position. Seek ye first. So peace is a first. It's like we operate from a platform of peace. We talk, we minister, we do, we act, we live always from a position of peace. Once you lost for a moment the consciousness and the awareness and the memory of the peace that he already gives, you literally, for a moment, you're lost. But for us as Christians, it becomes a platform. It becomes a foundation from which we live. We always live from this place of peace. We don't act in anxiousness. anxiousness. We don't act in a hurry. We don't act in just doing things. We act and move from an inner confidence in a place of seeking first the kingdom and his righteousness. It's not my righteousness. I'm not seeking how right I can be. I'm always and constantly seeking his righteousness. And then once I receive his righteousness, there's an exchange. He gives me his riches for my poverty. I give him my sickness. He gives me his healing. I give him my weakness. He gives me his strength. I give him my stupidity and he gives me his wisdom. This notion of constantly emptying myself so that I can default from the position of his fullness, from his righteousness. That becomes a default position. That becomes a first step, first position in everything I do. The next point is that peace that God gives is to be multiplied and shared. It's like a dynamo. The, the harder you drive, the quicker you go, the more pressure there is, the faster and the better and more power the dynamo creates. That's exactly how peace works. The peace that God gives is that it's almost that the harder Christians uh, the, the circumstances are, the more pressure, the more uh, persecution, the more adversary, the more the peace. Again, remember Peter and Silas in the prison. Remember Jesus in the storm. It's that, you see, this inner peace becomes a, like you, you're moving and operating from heaven. You see, counterfeit products are counterfeit because it lacks the authorization and the signature of the author or the creator. And so when, when we have the authorization of heaven, when we have the stamp of God's approval, we're living from that place of obedience, of doing exactly what he told us to do. That's peace. And the Bible is full of stories. Moses conquering the Red Sea and leading his people out from slavery. That place, what he did was from a place of peace. Daniel and the lion's den. The Bible is full of stories where people had peace, God-given peace, in the most severe and difficult circumstances. Why? Because they were living from this place. And, and peace, you know, like all the other peace that the world gives, if you use a substance so you can have peace, then you have to continue to use the substance and even buy more and more of the substance to have the same effect. Where the peace that God gives wants to be shared. The Shalom greeting is a good example of that. that the Jews would greet one another with peace be to you. So it's not just the peace that I have, but I give it, I sow it, I multiply it, I share it. That's why we are called to be the bridge builders, the reconcilers of mankind. We are sent out there in the most difficult circumstances like Esther in Persia, like Nehemiah in, in, in well, also Persia. Uh, all these people, Daniel in, in Babylon, they were put in the most difficult circumstances. 
But they had this peace within them, and because of that, God gave them rain. He gave them control. He gave them government. Remember Mo, uh, uh, Joseph, how he became the head of the prison guard, how he became the head of Potiphar's household, how he became the head of Egypt. And again, it's this peace of having a relationship with God and doing exactly what he tells us to do. Then he elevates us to that place of peace. See, the peace that God gives is to be manifested. We give peace. Wherever we enter a room, we exude the atmosphere of peace. Lastly, I think, you know, the, the way that peace works, it's a way of life. We find this in, in a beautiful scripture in Luke 1 verse 79. Yes, yeah, a long verse it's a, or a very long passage. And, and here it speaks of the Messiah and that he will come and it says, they will guide him, will guide our feet into the way of peace. You see, peace is a way of doing, and this is the way of the kingdom. If you want to be first, rather be lost. If you want to lead, rather serve. If you want to have, rather give. And, and this lifestyle of losing your life, losing your ego, is actually so freeing, and it's a lifestyle of peace. That's why you will find among Christians and true Christians that there's always peace. They don't compete with one another. Why? Because there's no ego then. There's no competition or jealousy. We're all undeserving of God's grace and His righteousness that we received as a free gift. We haven't earned it and we haven't worked for it. There's no method that we can be proud of and how we've received it. It's all a free gift. And because we live in this way of peace, we become peacemakers. We, our words are words that bring calm and speak peace to a storm. Our plans and solutions speak peace to troublesome, difficult circumstances. We literally become a resource center of peace. Wherever we are, we bring and we sow peace. This is because of doing life in a peaceful manner. We live in a peaceful way. We, if you spend time, uh, almost like a Christian is almost every day on holiday. You know, this beautiful swimming pool that I'm in, or where, <laughs> I'm not totally immersed in it, but I'm just sitting on edge. But, you know, this swimming pool is to me one of the most beautiful swimming pools I've ever seen. And we're living and we're having this time in Mauritius with holiday makers and you see them all over and they're so relaxed and, you know, they're having a good time. All of us somewhere have to go back to our jobs and our responsibilities and, and take on the difficulty of life. The peace that God gives becomes a lifestyle. So it's not an, it's not an escape anymore. I don't have to go to have a holiday to experience peace. I have peace all the time. And it's wonderful to take a break and to physically rest a little bit. And that's a blessing. But my soul is is launched or my soul is already comforted in his peace now it's interesting that you find this very interesting verse in matthew 10 verse 34 it says do not think that i came to bring peace on earth i do not come to bring peace but a sword for i have come to set a man against his father and a daughter against his mother uh, her mother and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law and a man's enemies will be those of his own household what is that all about? Well, you will find, and some experts have done the, cal done the calculations, that all over the democracies that you'll find in Africa, most voters will always vote for their own tribesmen rather than for the best technical candidate. The reason we do that is we find some false peace in the fact that our own will actually take better care of us than a technical uh, person from another tribe or ethnicity. And this is such a good, such a good example of exactly how people can uh, be misled into false peace. I mean, just look at history, and history will tell you the, the sad realities of the one candidate after the other, one political leader, one ruler after the other, who actually failed his own or her own people. You see, our trust is not in man. This is what Psalm 118 says. I don't put my trust in high things or in high men in high positions. Because these things are fake. It doesn't hold. It's a blessing if God uses and chooses to use a righteous leader. And for a period of time, we have 
wonderful physical earthly peace but all of that comes and go so we don't find comfort as many people do in relationships this is one of the the biggest comforts that we will have is our comforts in our family or our friendship circles and so forth and i've seen so many young people go astray um, because of a wrong relationship with a girlfriend that isn't serving God, uh, a friendship circle of friends that that do not is not committed to God, and you 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 feel safe because you feel you belong and you feel like for a moment you're okay, but it's a false peace. You see, the peace that God offers is He Himself first reach out His hand of friendship and says, "Get to know Me." Let me be your father. Become part of my family. And then I will draw you in into other like-minded, mature Christian believers. And, and they will give you another sense of security. But even Christians and having a brotherhood and a family and a body in Christ, it's a blessing, but I don't put my trust in them. I don't put my trust in man. I still continually put my trust in God because I can't control who he will use to be a blessing in my life and who I will be a blessing to. You see, our lives are poured out as a drink offering, Paul says. And so are also our lives. And ultimately, we lose control. As a drink offering, the water pours out and it's goes onto the ground you can never capture it up again that's exactly how we surrender to his peace and somehow in this whole process of giving and surrendering ourselves to him he becomes our prince of peace our perfect peace my prayer today is that this simple message will remind you again of the peace that you already have because the more you seek it, it says that you don't have it. And the only way to have His peace is to make peace with God. And that means you simply surrender, repenting, and just come back like a lost child and embrace Him again and pray a simple prayer of faith and say, Lord Jesus, would you receive me back? And then as that day when Dr. Brian put his hand on my shoulder and that simple line where I lost this, you know, we were this uh, flight we lost, um, I missed it, it was my mistake, and, and I was so anxious, I was so afraid, and I came up to the, to the table to, you know, try to work something out, and uh, man, it was such a big thing. And Dr. Bright put his hand on my shoulder, and he just simply said, Brother Jan, it's going to be okay. Do not lose your peace. And that simple sentence just irked me. And for the next couple of days, even in my suitcase were like four or five days late, I was in perfect peace. And may this message do exactly that to you. It, it will just, again, silence all these false voices and false trust that we have in false peace and remind us again of the Prince of Peace that have captured our hearts. God bless you.